we need something on postmodernism. And we talked in your lecture, uh, you talked about the end of maternity and essentially being hinging on the whole idea of the the, the lack of a unitary uh, principle. Mm. Um, can you elaborate on that and uh, link it up with uh, postmodern currents? Um, and in particularly, I want you to answer another question, which is: uh, Isn't postmodernism itself another unifying principle? Yeah, in a sense, uh, postmodernism itself is a sort of paradoxical unifying view of a, a, multipl a pluralization. Because a pluralization without, again, this idea of a, of a destiny of being, of a unitary meaning of the pluralization, would simply be a sort of uh, uh, metaphysical theory of the plurality. Uh, well, that's a question. I mean, uh, I, I interpret the postmodernism from this Heideggerian point of view. Now, Heidegger's main idea is that being cannot be described as an object, as a structure, because uh, you would need uh, a light within which the object can uh, appear, and this the light maybe can be called a being. But this light cannot be, again, a, a sort of transcendental, stable structure like Kantian a priori. It has to be something else. So Heidegger elaborates the idea of being as an event, as an opening which happens from time to time, which makes possible the connection to uh, the, the experience of the world, of things, and so on. Uh, this opening is related to a provenance like uh, Heidegger is interested uh, above all in the history of, of language. So the history of language is exactly what reflects the succession of disclosures which are not absolutely instant, instant, instantaneously, like uh, something which happened without provenance, without origin. They are a sort of history. Uh, and this makes that um, this uh, um, uh, what what I call the pluralization of, of postmodernism, which happens in postmodernism, doesn't appear as something which is there. There are many points of view. It is a process of pluralization, not a state of affairs of pluralism. So this process has a sense, and, and this sense is a sort of paradoxically unitary sense, which is a sense of a dissolving, a sort of like is it like it is um, like to say uh, the sense of modern history is a, a, the loss of foundation or nihilism, as Nietzsche said. But nihilism, if you uh, view it from the point of view of authoritative structure in society, tolerance, and so on, it's not so bad as it looks. I mean, nihilism means that. Our history has a sense. The sense is the dissolution of the unitary, strong, authoritative, impulsive structures of the traditional thought, metaphysics, ethics, politics, authoritarian regimes, and so on. Now, modernity uh, had already this sense, but in a, in a certain, at a certain extent, still wanted to establish strong structures. So there was a historicism in modernity, uh, the idea of progress, for instance, uh, which didn't uh, accept completely pluralism. Progress was a sort of reducing the plurality of human cultures to different grades, different stages of, of our most civilized culture, Western culture, which uh, uh, named all the other people primitives, underdeveloped, and so on. They were simply steps towards the human ideal culture, which was us. Uh, now, postmodernity is a step beyond this point, the taking into account of the pluralization as a principle of unitary interpretation of history, but which makes impossible the, a, a, a unitary history. The only sense, unitary sense of history is the end is the dissolution of the unitary sense of history. It looks paradoxical, but it is not that. I mean, we are engaged in an adventure of weakening of the strong structures. The very notion of progress and of history as a unity was 
the last strong structure in our cultural history. So we still have a, a sort of leading thread, a sort of meaning of what happens. But this meaning is the fact of the fall of all these illusions of unitary great meanings, the narratives, as Lyotard called them. So only that Lyotard, even Lyotard, doesn't want to recognize that the, f uh, the falling down of the great narratives, the great ideologies, is a narrative. Because otherwise, it, would be, it should be described as a taking uh, into account that reali reality is like that. But this is another metaphysics. So if you don't accept the idea that the, the dissolution of the great narratives is still a narrative, paradoxically, you fall down back to a sort of empiricism, saying, OK, no, reality is that, plurality. Uh, so it's, uh, it's, it's, it looks uh, sophisticated, but uh, I think that is important in order to, uh, to draw also ethics consequence. If you recognize that uh, the history of, of modern and postmodern civilization as this weakening direction, moral choices can be guided by a sort of uh, attitude to reduct aggressivity, to reduce aggressivity, to, to be more friendly to nature and so on. As, as I told before, uh, it is a sort of Schopenhauerian ethics which is related, in my opinion, to weak thought.